Welcome collectors and diecast enthusiasts. Thank you for joining me once again for another episode of Diecast Emporium. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Diecast Masters Highline Series 1 to 50 scale Caterpillar M323F railroad wheeled excavator. Now, much like the 187 scale model of this exact machine that was released last year, there will be two versions of this model. Right now, we're going to be taking a look at the 85661 version, which is this model in safety yellow. And then a little bit later on this year, Diecast Masters plans to release this model in the standard cat black and yellow scheme as well, which will be item number 85662. All right, so as we always do with these videos, let's begin with the unboxing. All the Highline Series models come in this white outer protection shipping box, which of course not only protects the model inside, but also the collectible metal tin. Cut one side of the tape, open it up. That will unveil the model's box or tin and the protective nylon bag. Let you open up one end of that. Here's the tin. That gives us our first glimpse at the model itself. 1 to 50 scale, 85661 once again for your item number for reference. Cat M323F Railroad Wheeled Excavator. This picture has it with the ballast tamper attachment. There are two other attachments included with this model. Here's the top portion of the tin, which has the excavator working on the rails. Finally, on the back of the tin, you can see some overall operational specifications and machine dimensions and engine details of the real machine. If you're into that kind of thing and you'd like to read that, at this point, please feel free to read all about it and pause the video. We're going to go ahead and continue on with the unboxing. We're going to take the lid off. Now, there's a lot of documentation included with this model. You not only have the Diecast Masters Cat catalog, which allows me to show you that there's both of them. So this is the railroad wheeled excavator that we're going to see today in safety yellow. And there's the version coming later in cat yellow. All right. So we have three pieces of instructional documentation here. This tells us how to remove the work tools from the quick coupler. And I'll show you how to do that as we go on. This shows you how to install the operator figure. This piece of paper shows us that there is a pointer stick included to open up the doors and the engine hatch. This shows us that there's lights and spotlights that come on a spruce that you have to attach to the model once you get it. I have already gone and done that and I'll show you where they go just to save some time. At this point though, it's important that I mention that I hope that they rectify this by the time they release the uh, yellow version, or the cat yellow version, I should say. It's not really clear why this couldn't have been done at the factory, and to be honest with you, it's pretty finicky because the tolerances are very, very loose, so you almost have to glue these in, which again is not something that I particularly like doing, especially for the, uh, the longevity or the collector value of the model. Plus, if you were to drop one of these little lights on the floor, you're going to spend quite a considerable amount of time trying to track it down. So again, there are also many other larger pieces and smaller pieces that are factory installed on this model so it's not quite clear why this is something that couldn't have been done but nevertheless we move on another item included is our simulated piece of railroad track this is an all plastic component we have our operator figure we have our tweezers which is helpful in aiding to get our operator inside the cab. And then we have our pointer tool. Removing the top piece of foam rubber allows us access into the bottom portion. Here is the excavator. Here is the spruce that has all the lights, which I've told you I've already taken out. Here's our ballast tamper attachment. The bucket is clearly already on the machine. And the third attachment is the rail clamshell. To begin the first part of the assembly, I will show you where all 10 of the small lights go on this machine. Once you cut them from the spruce, you're going to put four 
on the back portion. One, two, three, four, five. So you have three on the back and I guess five back here. So there's a total of five. You will place two, one on each side of the boom. One, two. You will place one right underneath the two-piece boom. And then you will place two on either portion or either side of the stick, one and two. So just to recap, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little lights that need to be assembled on the M323. The next piece of optional assembly is putting your operator figure inside the cab, which you can do with the little tweezers here, or you can finagle them just with your hands and fingers. So he's inside the cab. One of the great working features on this railroad reel excavator is the fact that it has not one, not two, but three opening compartments or opening doors. You can see that the main door for the operator's cab opens, and you can do that with the provided pointer pick, but I have found since the tolerances are very tight, you're going to want something that's a little bit longer and a little bit stronger, so perhaps the picks that come with some of the higher-end models are a little bit more helpful. So with the operator in, let's close that door. There's another opening door right behind him, almost as a passenger seat or perhaps a more appropriately, a trainer seat, so you can have another operator figure right behind the operator, perhaps learning the ropes or learning how to operate the M323. Let's close that now. Turning the excavator to the other side. Here's the other opening hatch, which is a engine maintenance hatch. There's quite a lot of detail inside, which if the light catches it just perfectly, you can see that there's some silver and red components along the black backdrop, which is always good to see. The hinge is on the inside, so it's somewhat discreet. And again, of the three, this is certainly the one that has the tightest tolerance. So that will conclude the opening door features on the model. Let's see how the two-piece boom and the stick functions on this. It does function rather well. As you can see, you can raise it to a height of there. Your stick will go out to here, but let's see how well it digs. Now, usually these aren't going to be digging very far, but if you wanted to, you can pose it digging to about there, which is a pretty reasonable depth. As for your curl in with your bucket, you won't be disappointed there. And as for a carry mode or a transport driving mode, Again, pretty reasonable. So, let's see how the attachments work. The quick coupler is one of the very few pieces of plastic on this model, right here and right here. It has a clip-on and then hook-over mechanism that we've seen before on other die-cast masters, uh, excavators, and loader models in the past. The ballast tamperer is a die cast piece, as you can see here, and that's to compact the material along the railroad ties and such. So let's put him on now. Again, put him on the front and then hook over the back portion until you hear a click. You can also spin it 360 degrees. And again, you can lower it to work on the railroad ties and tamper the ballast around it. Let's put the clamshell on now. With the clamshell on, you can see that it spreads open, kind of like the jaws of life. So if you have different pieces of railroad, for example, that you're modeling on your 1 to 48 or O gauge railroad. You can have them in between here being picked up and put down. It also spins a fair degree, 
just like that, 360 degrees. And again, for the most part, besides the hydraulic cylinders, this again is made of pretty durable material. Now, the last piece of working functionality on this particular excavator, aside from the rear axle, which does steer, are the railroad wheels. Now, they will go on the supplied plastic base that is included with this model. So we'll lower those down, show you how that works. And as you see, if you line it up just perfectly, it will go on the railroad. Now, as nice as that is, I'm sure there are many O-gauge railroaders out there that want to see how it works on an authentic piece of railroad. So, this is a Lionel 10-inch piece of straight track that I have procured just for you guys. So let's test it out on that. Once again, you can see that it fits on there perfectly, and... The wheels, the metal railroad wheels, sometimes called the bogey wheels, are moving on that perfectly. So there you go, collectors. That concludes my review of the Diecast Masters Caterpillar M323F Railroad Wheeled Excavator in 1 to 50 scale. Any way you cut it, this is a fantastic cat model in 1 to 50 scale. This is a must-add for any O-gauge railroaders that want to have a unique piece of Caterpillar equipment doing some maintenance of way on their model, model railroad, as well as any other cat collectors that collect all of the cat excavators. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care and be safe. I'll see you in the next review.